In this lesson, we'll learn about the basics of solid, linear, and radial flood fills here in Sketchbook Designer. All right, great. So this is the Lesson 18 file we're going to work with. And uh, before we start working with the shoe itself here, let me just kind of go ahead and break down the basics of flood fills and how they work. So um, I'm going to come in here on the same vector layer, and I'm going to go ahead and grab my pen. And let's just go ahead and we'll just use that one right there. And we'll, we're going to draw a few strokes here. So in order to use a flood fill, we need to have a closed off area with our vectors. So um, a good example of this would be maybe this area right here, this small little wedge on the top of the shoe. This area is closed off because there's no gaps in this area. So um, if we were wanting to create one of those, we'll just come in here and draw maybe sort of a triangular shape. I've closed off this area. This can now have a flood fill applied to it. Now there are four different types of flood fills that we can utilize. We could utilize a solid fill, which is just going to be a solid color. A linear fill, which is going to give us a linear ramp or a linear gradient. Uh, we can utilize a radial fill, which produces a radial ramp or radial gradient. And lastly, we're, we can produce a texture fill. Now, we're not going to look at texture fills in this lesson. We'll save that for the next one. But let's come over here and grab our bucket here. Now, this is our solid fill bucket. So we need to come in and specify a color. And let's say we want this to be maybe an orange color. Something like that looks good. So notice here what happens. If I come over and start mousing over these vector paths, these vector curves that I've drawn, um, if I mouse over here, kind of this area, this is not a closed off area. So what Sketchbook is telling me, you'll notice there's little red dots at the end of the curves. Sketchbook Designer is telling me that there's a problem with that area and it's related to these little red dots. Well, there needs to be another curve that closes that area off. The same thing happens here. We get those little red dots. But if I mouse over this area that we know is closed, I can see there's a little orange highlight around the edges of that telling me, hey, this area is good to apply a flood fill to. So let's just go ahead and click there. You'll notice that the flood fill gets applied and we're left with a little color wheel on top of there. So what we can do now with that little color wheel in place is we can come over here and we can begin to adjust the color. Maybe we want that to be blue instead. So we can come over here and adjust the color. So uh, let me go ahead and deselect that. There we go. Now here's the beautiful thing about fills inside of Sketchbook Designer. Um, this is a closed off area, but let's say we open that area up. Let's come in and just grab this control point and drag that over. This is no longer a filled in area anymore. It's actually open. So you'll notice that our flood fill disappeared. But if we close that area off again, let's just grab this one and drag it over to where it closes up. Notice what happens. Our flood fill comes back. So there's memory there with Sketchbook Designer that, hey, there's actually a flood fill here, but it's just this area has been opened up, so we're not going to show it. So uh, now if we were to come over here and delete one of these entire, entirely, let me just come over, select this particular curve, and I'm just going to hit my delete key. And then we came over and redrew it. Notice that the, now that there's a new curve involved, that fill doesn't come back. So as long as the curves are all the, the same curves that were used when the original solid fill was created, then we can get that, that flood fill back just simply by reconnecting that space in, uh, in between these curves. So um, with that said, let's go ahead and just work on the shoe just a little bit. I'm going to select these and delete them. And let's come over here. Now, if we wanted to come over and create sort of a flat colored piece of artwork here, we can come over and again, just grab our solid fill and set this to maybe like a dark gray. And we could start to come in here and pick out areas that we wanted to fill with that dark gray color, sort of like that. Now, ultimately, we wanted to create a little bit more realistic concept here, something that shows some form. So maybe a solid colored fill isn't the best fill to use. So what we should do, let's come over here and select the fills. I'm going to come over and notice when I mouse over uh, this particular closed in area, we get that orange highlight indicating that there is a fill there. I'm going to select that just like so. And you'll notice my color wheel comes up and I'm going to hit my delete key. Now that 
color fill is gone. We can go ahead and go about selecting our Select Curve tool by hitting V and deleting these other solid fills. So uh, this is something that I've found to be kind of a, a good habit to get into. If you come in with one fill, I wouldn't make it a habit of dropping additional fills on top of uh, fills that you've already created. So we're going to go ahead and delete these fills here. We'll just zoom in and select that one. All right, great. So let's look at the linear fill next here. The linear fill is right next to the solid fill. We'll just go ahead and click on that here. And over here in my attribute editor, you get sort of a preview of what this linear fill is going to look like. It's giving us a linear ramp or gradient. So uh, let's pick on this area right here. I'm just going to click in this area and I'm going to drag. So clicking starts the ramp and dragging spreads it out. So you can see here we're getting a little bit of a bounding box there. All right, great. So we still have that gradient ramp selected here. Or that linear ramp. So let's zoom in on this. Now, um, obviously, we have a bounding box here. We've learned about the transformation tools up here and kind of what we can do with those bounding boxes. What we need to look at here is, first of all, this three dots along the center line. These are all colors. So we have sort of this light gray to white to light gray. Each one of these can be selected, and we can come over here and modify that. So uh, let's select this one here, come over and make it a darker gray. Oop, looks like I deselected it, so actually I dropped a gradient in up there. Let me come in and select that gradient again. There we go. Now we're going to select this particular piece right here. Just like so. And maybe this one right here, we want to make that a little bit darker as well. And maybe over here, we're going to make that yet a little bit darker. All right, great. So basically what I'm trying to do here is simulate a highlight. So that's why the center uh, color wheel is going to be a lighter gray. Now we can actually move that up and down. So if we wanted that to be closer up here, if we wanted it to be closer down here, whatever the case may be. But keep in mind that this is just a straight linear gradient as it is right now. This is probably not the best gradient to use here because, you know, if I'm looking at this shoe, I would think that there's probably going to be a little bit of a curvature here where it wraps around the outside of whoever's foot. Or if this is the inside of the shoe, maybe it's wrapping around the interior of the foot. So let's go ahead and look at ways that we can come in here and begin to manipulate the bounding box here. Now, just like with the trans some of the transformation tools, we can grab these corner pieces maybe and stretch them out. Now, if we drag that up there, you can kind of see what that does to our linear ramp. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to kind of fit this to kind of the form that I see in my mind that the foot would have. Now, this is going to be a problem because this is a straight line right here. But notice here that if I mouse over this edge, I can come in and I can add a control point there. And then we can begin to bend that and curve our linear ramp. So maybe we want it to look something like that. That's actually looking pretty good. Now, we can also add additional colors to our ramps here, simply by coming in and notice if I mouse over the center line, we can click there and add another color in. Maybe we want to come in and add sort of a stroke here. Uh, maybe we come in and select this and make this particular one kind of a bright orange color. Then we could maybe take these two and kind of pinch in on that give kind of a nice vibrant orange there. Now, depending on how close these color stops are to one another, you may have to come in and zoom in pretty close, but um, that's actually looking pretty good. Now, if we change our mind and we don't want these, we can, all we need to do is come in and remove them just like so. All right, fantastic. So this is a linear ramp and its bounding box here. This is really one of my favorite features inside of Sketchbook Designer, just its ability to create gradient ramps. Now, uh, just like with the linear ramp, we also have a radial ramp available to us or a radial fill up here. So let's go ahead and select that one and I'm going to drop it in right here. Now, um, obviously, you can see here just by clicking it, it dropped a pretty big one in there. So let me undo that, and I'm going to click and drag. And you can see here how we're dragging out this radial color ramp. So uh, we can reposition if we need to. Again, we can come in here and begin to manipulate the size and the proportions of that ramp. 
Maybe we want that to be sort of like that. And we can come in here and start to change the colors. Let me just grab the color editor here. Come in and change the colors a bit. And if we need to, we can come in and add additional control points and really begin to manipulate our color ramp here to whatever we want it to look like. So uh, again, the bounding box on this is going to work very similar to the linear fill and its color ramp, only instead of a linear fill, we're working with a radial fill now. Now let me show you one last thing about these, these fills. So um, basically when it comes to this little shape I filled right here, I probably wouldn't use a radial fill for that. So let me hit the delete key, get rid of that. I want to come in and grab my select curve tool and we're just going to click on this gradient ramp here. Now notice when I mouse over other areas, it's actually giving me the paint bucket. So we can actually add an additional linear fill and the colors are going to be remembered. Since we selected that one that we'd already configured, we don't have to come in here and choose the colors again. All we need to do is manipulate the bounding box. So maybe we want it to look something like that. And we can come over here, pan over, and maybe we apply another one here. Manipulate the bounding box a little bit to add a little bit of form to that, that shape. And we can continue on filling whichever areas we want here. I love these linear fills just simply because uh, with the addition of being able to add these control points here, it really gives you a lot of control over exactly how the forms appear uh, that the gradients are creating here. So uh, let me go ahead and just deselect that. We can kind of zoom out. And you can kind of see how with these simple linear fills, we are uh, beginning to add some form to the shoe. All right, great. So in this lesson, we've learned about of Sketchbook Designer. We've learned how to use a solid fill, a linear fill, and a radial fill. But there's one fill that we haven't even touched on yet, and it's a really cool one. So in the next lesson, we'll pick up where we're leaving off here, and we'll learn about texture fills.